going to wait here just a moment, um, see if there's anybody who comes on. Uh, I just wanted to talk to a couple of you. Uh, my name is John Paul Rice. For the people watching that may not know who I am, my friends know me. I'm an independent film producer. I've been in Hollywood for about 20 years. I started my film career in Remember the Titans. Uh, worked at Senator International, later Mandate Pictures, under the producers who did Juno, The Grudge, Harold and Kumar, Stranger Than Fiction, and uh, eventually The Hunger Games when they went back into Lionsgate. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk to everybody here today is because uh, over the last the course of the last week or two, we have found out uh, without notification that Amazon.com, for which we have six of our movies on there, our film, A Child's Voice, which has been on there for over a year and a half in the UK, the United States, and now 70 other countries, was suddenly, without notification, removed entirely from their platform. They unpublished it, and they made it not searchable in most of the sites. We've only tested a few outside of the United States, but the one in the United States, if you put in A Child's Voice in Amazon.com, you can't find it on the 1,100 pages that they'll give you back on your searches. The only way that you can get it is through a direct link. And we discovered this because the director's daughter had sent the links out to several of her friends when the Wayfair scandal broke, as well as the Maxwell files being released in the last 48 hours. And Amazon came back to us. They gave us a very standard corporate non-committal response that said, we make a lot of changes. We do this and that and the other. We judge things based on performance but they couldn't give us a very specific answer. And we all know what the answer is. What our movie did before Epstein was known about in the public and before Maxwell was known about in the public is we found a network of pedophiles among a global network of people who were selling kids back and forth to each other, trading them like candy. It goes right in through Hollywood. If you look at the Daily Beast article, you'll see that Jeffrey Epstein had a pipeline right into Hollywood through Harvey Weinstein. That was last year. I've done a lot of deep dives and research into this, and there is a very satanic element to it for which we incorporated it into our movie. Our movie is a feature film. It deals with two teens, one who's a homeless heroin addicted teen, Here's the voice of a child who had been killed at the beginning of the movie, calls out for his help, and he goes on a mission to rescue a girl from these human traffickers. They come together, and then they stand up to this network in a spirit of love and courage for all of these children. It's a very beautiful film. It's been well-reviewed, well-received, critically acclaimed by the people that have reviewed it, and also many users by the thousands, by the tens of thousands, by the millions all over the world have seen this. So when we had all of this come up, we went viral with it on Twitter the other day and it exploded because we still have one platform left here in the United States and that's Vimeo.com on demand. What I would like everybody to do is more importantly, I don't need to get back on Amazon. I already know what they're gonna do and they've got a stack of lawyers, but we're looking for alternative platforms where we can release this movie and get it out to as many people as possible. Our movie is not a documentary, it's a feature film. And we did this based on all the evidence and the facts that we had learned and incorporated into a story that you get involved through the character's journey. Their road to redemption is through love. And this issue of human trafficking, which many people are waking up to today for a variety of reasons, is the issue that defines all of us in our time. The media corporations, the most powerful six corporations in the land, in the world for that matter, are all implicated in human trafficking of kids. And I would point to anybody who wants to know more about that to look at Project Veritas and the, and the leak disclosure of off-air footage of Amy Robach from ABC News when she found out and was discussing in 2016 that they had everything from Virginia Guffrey, all of it. Everybody who was involved, they had all the evidence. Their own lawyer said that when all is said and done, Jeffrey Epstein will go down as one of the most prolific pedophiles in all of history, and they buried that story to have access to the royal family, for which we now know Prince Andrew was implicated. They did not have any remorse for the victims in that video. 
This is a bigger problem because most people know in that world and the world that I come from in Hollywood, that it is a hidden layer that everybody knows is there. When the Me Too movement started in 2017, I reached out to several of my female actress friends who were prominent in LA. You would know them by name. Many of them you would know by just their look because you go, oh, that was her in that movie or that movie. And I said, well, what about the children? What about the children? And, they, and the response was, we know, we know. But they were silent on it. And it destroyed me because it destroyed my illusion of what rights, human rights were, children's rights were. This is a child abuse system that we have been living in for a very long time and it's been allowed to go on. And I will not be silent about this because it affects every single one of us. The people on television who smile at you, who tell you stories, who give you news, are the ones who hide all of this from us. They are not talking about the real issues. They are distracting you with division issues. This is a unification issue. When the Maxwell Files came out 48 hours ago, I went on MSNBC, I went on CNN.com, and I looked at every single one of their headlines, and there was no mention of it whatsoever. They were talking about John Lewis's funeral. They were talking about Obama versus Trump. All of the bullshit that you and I hear every single day. And it doesn't matter what side of the political equation you're on on this. This is a child issue. This is a human issue. This is not a political issue. It has nothing to do with left versus right, Democrat versus Republican, liberal versus conservative, or anything you are or you identify with as in between. We are faced with a crisis of consciousness among the leadership of our banking institutions, of our media corporations, of the Hollywood entertainment industry, of the music industry. This is not about a bunch of young women who were having sex with older men and make it about a bunch of perverts. They raped and tortured these girls against their own free will. No matter whether they paid them or not, if you read the articles and you listen to what Ghislaine Maxwell said about the girls that she picked up in West Palm Beach's trailer parks, she was asked, what about the young girls? What are we going to do to them? What, what's going to happen to them? She said, they are trash. They are nothing. That's a direct quote from the New Yorker. When I went and looked at edge.org, which you can find out was a multi-billionaire club of people, that was financed by Jeffrey Epstein. You can go to edge.org today, look up under people and go to G. You'll see Bill Gates on there as a contributing member of that organization. And you'd have to go back in the Wayback Machine and Internet Archives to look at all the other people. Jeffrey Epstein was right on there. Marina Averovich is on there. Paul Allen was on there. All the heads of major industries were on there. And if you start reading some of the articles, one of which I have a direct link to, that I will share with anybody who DMs me. There is a direct quote on there that said, indeed human beings are in our youngest years, use the most among the most useless creatures in all of the animal kingdom. This is how they view children through science. This is their expression. These are people who have no ground to tell you what to think what to do. So when they get up there and they start espousing their views on social justice or whatever the hell it is, know that you're hearing a controlled and scripted dialogue that is going through a filter by people who are very powerful, who hold a lot of money, and they are controlling and conditioning all of these people through pedophilia. And there's another layer to it, but it's too unbelievable to believe that they would also sacrifice kids. And I'll give you one statistic that you can look up and verify for yourself. If you go to UNICEF and you look up child sex trafficking or human trafficking, you'll find a statistic glo globally, worldwide, according to the United Nations, that 40 million people a year are trafficked around this world. 40 million. It's a $150 billion a year industry for which has very dark and ugly ties. 
and it goes all the way up into Wall Street and beyond. But I will say this, 5.5 million children every year are trafficked around the world. 5.5 million, most of whom don't live past age seven or eight, which means they have to replenish that supply chain. We harvest, they harvest organs of children on a black market. In China right now, there are concentration camps for young Muslims to the tune of one million people. Nobody's talking about this as modern day slavery. They are beating these people, they are reindoctrinating them, and they are raping their wives to start a new bloodline. That's happening right now in China. You can find that on the Washington Post or the New York Times. Nobody else is saying anything about it in our politics, in our mainstream news, nobody's talking about it. It is slavery of human beings is going on today and it must stop and it is a child abuse issue. All of these kids that were preyed upon, many of them came from bad homes. That's not their fault. But these predators, they come after our children because they can offer them things. They can offer them alcohol. They can offer them money. They can offer them drugs to lure them in. And suddenly, as you will find out if you read the Maxwell testimony, you'll find that what they were doing is they were saying, they asked G. Lay Maxwell, well, did you ever talk to her about money that she could earn about giving a hand job or sexual favors to Epstein. And she went through this long explanation. Well, we discussed career advice and I advised her and possibly, you know, told her that where she could advance her career. That's as far as she would go. And then her lawyer cut her off. These people don't give a shit about anybody. And they get up there and they smile in front of you and they are in infiltrated throughout all of our institutions, including government. They own the politicians, right and left. What we are going to find out very soon is that there aren't Democrats and Republicans in the United States government. There's a unified cabal of controlled people who serve these powers and they keep the theater going for you and I to run back and forth and vote every four years. I have watched horror story after horror story, and I promise you this is true. Go on YouTube and find Anake Lucas, who was a child sex slave at six years old for the elite. And she will describe to you, she also gave a TED talk on this, but this was in 2016. She talked about the block of wood that she saw with the stains of blood of children on it. The predators are not just raping and having sex and torturing and beating these kids. They're murdering them for pleasure. This is not a pedophile. These are psychopaths and they have no remorse whatsoever in what they're doing. What we need to do in this world is unify together to protect all life on this planet and the sacredness of children. Because if we are going to make it through this time with all the upheavals that are going to come, socioeconomic, racial, however you want to measure it, this is the unifying issue that the establishment will not give you a movement for. You're going to have to do it on your own. They will give you the Me Too movement because they can make it about hatred of men and weaponize it and make it political. They'll give you the Black Lives Matter movement because they can weaponize it and make it political. They can have Colin Kaepernick take a knee, divide the country, and he walks away with a check from Nike at a multi tens of millions of dollars NFL star level deal while Nike has concentration camp, slave labor camp workers working in China at their factories. Also, our kids can have their Air Jordans. And Colin Kaepernick says nothing about that. Where are our Martin Luther King Jr.'s and our Malcolm X's? They're in celebrity culture. All of these people who get up and say that we live in an oppressive system are taking checks from white men who are paying them. And why I'm saying this is I'm so angry because it all ties into this abuse of human rights. We have to stop fighting each other and unite for this country and this world for our children. I don't care that Amazon 
took my movie down. In fact, it tells me that we're doing better than ever before and that this issue is spreading all over. 80 million impressions last month alone on TikTok for Pizzagate, for which if anybody looks into it, I tell them, go look at the New York Times coverage in 2016 and look at how they covered it and then go look at James Alephantis's Instagram images. They completely omitted them. This is the family restaurant owner who is posting pictures of children in compromising positions and all of the friends that James Alephantis has was talking about how delicious those kids looked. Would you send your child and walk into a restaurant for which the owner is publicly doing those kinds of things on social media in a public forum? Look at Pedogate 2020. Watch Out of Shadows to get an idea of how disgusting these people are. And they have the gall to call you a right-winger or a conspiracy theorist or a white supremacist or a neo-Nazi. They'll do it to everybody. Doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or Republican. They'll do it to everybody. I've been called every name in the book. And I'm telling you this. I woke up. Because I listened to what other people were saying and I waited and I sought out the truth for myself. I didn't wait for the mainstream media to tell me. Every single time there is a disclosure in Hollywood, all of these kids, I worked there for 20 years, I saw shit that nobody should see. I didn't partake in things, it was just right in front of me, out in the open. These kids, when you see Britney Spears, when you see Amanda Bynes, when you see any of these young pop stars have meltdowns, that's not because they're famous. That's not because of the pressures of stardom and the money getting to them. It's because they're sexually abused and handed around like candy. You go on crazy days and nights, you can go to Tracy Bean's channel and look up that video which she did at the end of 2019. It'll blow your mind. They have a pipeline of kids going from Haiti all the way to the Vatican on boats. And there are people in Hollywood who facilitate all this, stars who will go and date rich men. You can look up this. These stories are in the press. They're not, they're hidden like they're, they're traveling and they're going over here. They're hanging out with billionaire men in the Middle East. It has nothing to do with the fact that they're Muslim. It's not even that they're Muslim. These are kings. These are princes. These are uh, heads of state, dignitaries, billionaire moguls, all hanging around Khan. And it's legitimate. It's completely legitimate. They call it yachting. And that's just the dating part of it and having sex for money, which they throw hundreds of thousands of dollars at some of these girls, depending on how long they'll stay with them and accompany them to dinners and have sex with them and do whatever they want in their orgies or whatever sexual perversions they have. This has been going on for decades, forever. Hollywood is just the most publicly visible because it's out in our faces, it's on our airways, it's on our TV all the time, it's in our music industry. You would not believe the level of satanic crap that is in there. And if you had told me this three years ago, I would have said, you're crazy. I thought, you know, that's a little, that's too far. No, 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 no. This satanic shit that is going on in our music industry and in Hollywood too, but mostly in the music industry, is so out there. Once you look at it and you see the occult symbolism, they use it in everything. Baphomet is everywhere. Pentagram is all over the place. And they sew it into the, to the consciousness of these young kids through witchcraft and all sorts of fun stuff. They make it fun. They make it sound fun. And it's sexy. But I'll give you this, just on the practical level. You look at every pop star over the last 20 years, and especially in the last 10, Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus, where do they start? Innocence. Miley Cyrus is Hannah Montana. Innocence. She came out with a music video last year. For what? Where she had claws and teeth on her vagina. They promote diversity, tolerance, all of this to confuse people and they don't even see it. Ariana Grande, unfortunately, I feel very bad for these kids because they're children and they have to do horrific things. Kaya Jones, who I know personally, 
was a former member of the Pussycat Dolls. And she gave her testimony in 2017, right after the Las Vegas shooting, because she was there. And she started talking as, as far as she could go about what these kids go through. And her moment of clarity was she saw what everybody else around her in the group was starting to do. Sex was nothing. But then taking advantage of people and having no remorse for it, she saw another level to it. And it was the moment she was at the MGM Grand standing up there singing and these young girls looking up and idolizing these women. You're the pussycat dolls. I want to be like you. She couldn't do it anymore and she walked away. We can have truthful art in this world. We don't need propaganda. Truthful art begins with the diversity of ideas and truthful information being disclosed. We can have beautiful films. We can have honest expressions in, that come from within us. The journey of art is to discover what is within you that is the unknown, which you follow a belief to find. But in that discovery, there is the transcendent, which is what did I struggle with and come to confront within myself that I needed to release and share and let you decide what is real, what is true for you in that honest expression. But the other stuff, which is I'm going to tell you what you should think, and these are the bad people, and these are the good people, and this is what you need to think, and this is what you need to do, and everybody just gets all excited about that. That is the same stuff that we've been doing for so very long. And Hollywood, I will tell you this, if you look back why there's reboots, remakes, prequels, and sequels, I've discussed this with many of my writer friends in Hollywood who were deeply embedded trying to help get the truth out through the disclosure in their movies. They all told me what the gatekeepers all know at the very, very top, not the executives, not the agents, not the managers. It's, it's like a banking institution. The person at the teller working with the customer does not have privy to the knowledge of the CEO and the chairman of the board and what they discussed the day before. They're just doing their job, right? So everybody does their job according to what they know. So Hollywood gets this, the word out through the studios. This is the kind of content we're looking for. But the gatekeepers at the very top are managers to make sure that we don't wake up. They control everything that we see. And it is very important for them to do that because they don't need you and I starting to have new ideas about things that go outside of the orthodoxy of what they want us to know. So the reboots, remakes, prequels, and sequels is like a holding pattern so that we keep retreading through the same ideas, even though as humans, our minds are to expand, to grow, to stretch, to reach out. And we're in a time where we're trapped between everything that we're supposed to do. There's so much cognitive dissonance. It's a reflection of this whole system which preys on children. That is the number one Achilles heel of this entire time. These people don't want you to know that. They want you to think that we're the problem instead of the one-tenth of one percent who control everything and have the gall to turn around and message to all of us and tell us that we're the problem or white people are the problem or black people are the problem or brown people are the problem. I live here out away from the city now and I'm in a town that is 50-50 black and white, roughly. We had a Black Lives Matter protest about a month and a half ago, good sized crowd. We had white and black cops there standing while they protest peacefully, serving food to everyone, including the cops, next to a Confederate statue. Nobody was pulling it down, nobody was yelling, nobody was arguing. Everybody was getting along. Across the street, we had restaurants filled to the brim with people having fun, children and parents outside, eating ice cream together, no masks. And everybody was fine. This division that they're stirring up, I'm telling you this because you need to understand, they're going to do everything they can 
to tear this country apart at the seams. And they're going to throw everything they have at it to keep this truth from coming out. You all have to do your own work as you want to. Support the things that mean the most to you. If this human trafficking issue moves you and stirs you in such a way that you wish to do something about it, get involved locally. Your sheriff, your sheriff in your local town, that is the number one place to start because that's the person that enforces the law locally. Your local representatives and officials need to not only become aware of it, but make it a priority that it doesn't come into your neighborhood. And ultimately what we need to do is go within. Because this, I said earlier, is not a political issue and it's not a corporate issue. It's a human issue. It's a heart-led movement of love. That's what gives us courage to stand up in the face of such horrors. I know that from my own experience because I went through my own discovery of my abuse and had to come to terms with it. But more importantly, to heal from it was the healing within that gave me the power and the strength to forgive my father and mother not falsely and move on from it, but love them because I saw that my suffering was their suffering and their suffering was my suffering. And I could care for them unconditionally in spite of all that I had endured because I realized that what comes about evil in the world is through darkness, which is unconsciousness, unaware of what they were doing with their best intentions. But let me say the opposite of this. The flip side of that equation is that every single child born in this world is born with love in their heart. Every single one of them. You may want to pick off one or 2%, fine. I'm going to give that to you. 99 to 98% of all children, seven and a half to 7.8 billion of us on this planet are born hardwired to love those two people that are supposed to be good to us. And what happens when you damage a child, when you hurt that child, when you humiliate that child, when you put that child second to your own needs, when you beat that child, when you spank that child, and put fear in that child's heart and mind, that child will still love you no matter what, because it can't conceive of the two people that were supposed to love them ever to do something that would hurt them and they will blame themselves and they will grow up with that all their life. The frequency and the consistency of that could make it worse. And if there's no adult around that they can trust, they can grow up to become a pedophile if they were sexually abused. That's what happens. There are some that are sexually abused that don't get that, but they had an outlet somewhere. Someone cared for them enough along the way that loved them enough to rescue them and save them and give them love and care. These are the kind of conversations that we need to start having in our own homes, in our own hearts. Because if we're ever to change this time, to never return to a time where our leaders that we elect, people who get appointed to boards and the heads of industries do this shit to children, this is our consciousness doing this, unaware. These people prey upon abused children because they can offer them something that they don't have at home. It's the same thing with gangs. They don't have a family that loves them. So they go and make their own family somewhere else among a group that is just like them. That's their identification. All of us are seeking love with a veil over us if we were damaged as kids. And we find it in different ways. We find it with our partners. We find it around the people that abuse us. We want to be loved. Every child is born with that love inside of them. It gives them the power to carry on and not kill themselves. But when you damage it to such a point and destroy it, you're going to get terrible outcomes. You're going to get people who beat each other. You're going to get people who bloody each other. You're going to get people who murder each other because they're so angry. And I don't think for a moment that we are prepared to deal with that on a mass scale. 
This, this child sex trafficking issue is something that we're going to learn many, many things about over the next several months into years from now. And it's going to horrify a lot of people. It's going to traumatize a lot of people because there's unconscious traumas that are going on inside of each and every one of us at different times and at different levels. This is not a judgment about you or anybody else because you know you better than anybody else. But I'm going to tell you there's a couple of things that need to go out there and need to be known. Number one, learn about Alice Miller and her work. Drama of the Gifted Child, For Your Own Good, The Body Never Lies. Those three books right there are paramount to understanding the lingering effects of harmful parenting. And we're not just talking about mom saying a bad word to us. I'm talking about systemic abuse that is in the home that is carried within us for a very long time and we tell ourselves a story that my mom and dad did the best they could. Half of that is true because if they had known what they were doing to you at the time, they would have stopped. I hope. The second thing is to learn EFT, Emotion Freedom Technique. It was developed by Carl Dawson and it has now been integrated into matrix reimprinting. You can go on YouTube and look up the videos there. This is something you can do yourself. There's also a technique called Havening by Paul McKenna. These are all on YouTube, but EFT and matrix reimprinting by Carl Dawson, and there's many, many practitioners out there now. And what this thing is, and I've done it myself, is it takes the emotions of the past and the thought associated with them the anger, the rage, the depression, the sadness, which we often bury or get busy with doing something else, and it breaks the connection permanently. This is a technique that has cured people with PTSD for over 20 years. Manic depression in 60 seconds has been cured permanently where people have been on every single drug. And there's endless testimonies to this, and there's practices of live demonstrations of this being done on people. It is a beautiful thing, and it is the thing that we need to begin to change our brains, to change the way we think, and to open our minds to a loving heart that each and every one of us is born with, because we have a battle ahead. We are going to have a lot of human carnage that we don't see yet, having manifested, because of the horrors that have been sown into society and our children who are being summoned by this energy, this negative energy, this anger. And they are going to be pulled away from themselves even further and given a righteousness to act in the name of violence against their fellow human beings. I cannot tell you the depths of how far this goes. I can only point you in one direction. If you look up Ronald Bernard and his testimony in the International Tribunal of Justice in 2018, it's about a 33-minute video. It will tell you the entire time that we're living through right now. And it is very important. And there is a message of love and hope in there that he gives you. And I have met this man through the Internet, and I've been talking with him over the years. And he is writing a tell-all book that he's going to be out with in about six months from now but he is as courageous as anybody that I've ever known. And he went through his own suffering and he went all the way up through the power structure, through the banks at the very top, the tippy top, and saw what was going on behind the scenes. And he was horrified and it broke him to pieces. So just know this, your love and your care for yourself and the people that let love you back. Most importantly, every single child that you come across, every single one of them, even not your own, that you give an act of love to is like a deposit of gold in the bank for their future. You don't know what trajectories you are turning them away from by giving them that little smile, that little beauty, that little extra affection. It's, it is magical to watch a kid pop up the moment you give them attention. 
Very rarely as adults do we do that because we're so busy and we've got so many filters, but children are open. They're very, very open and they're extremely programmable. The first seven years of their life, they are 100% programmable in a delta and theta brainwave state. And that means that everything that you speak to them, they take it in. They absorb it into their subconscious mind. The energy, the frequency, and the vibration. So if you put negative energy out there, they're going to absorb that in. And that becomes part of their personality and their habits that they will develop over time. We have to start learning. We cannot be caught in this division anymore. The people that are doing the division know very well how to make you angry. And you have to say that's about enough. And when you do, and when this world comes together against these monsters, they will have no more power because the only weapon that they have is fear. That's how they get to these kids. They give them fear and they put fear into them and they keep them controlled through fear. And they do exactly that with you through the television, through the media, through your politicians, through all the institutions to cause you despair and anger and negativity where you argue amongst each other. I worked in the banking industry for 14 years in the bank of the stars, the one-tenth of one percent that catered to Hollywood. And I can tell you very clearly, these people have gotten away with next to murder. So that's all I wanted to say. Amazon banned our film. I don't care. I want you to know that it's on Vimeo.com, on demand. You can go to our website, No Restrictions Entertainment. You can find the movie there, rent it. And here's the thing. If you see this movie and it moves you, send it to everyone you know. And I don't even mind at all that you share your account with other people so that they don't have to pay for it. I'm that adamant about this issue. I have studied it so intensely and I don't recommend people doing that unless you have the strength to endure it because you'll have many sleepless nights. But I'm gonna tell you this, our love for our kids is greater than all the horrors that these people have ever done in the history of the world. And they know that and they know what we are. They know that we come from a creator of heaven and earth. That is not a religious belief. That is why they do what they do to kids because it's the closest thing to God that we have on the face of this earth. And our love for our kids is unbelievably powerful. Unbelievable, the energy that that sends out into the world. And our love and care for each other is unbelievably powerful, more than their fear. They have to get you to consent and believe in them to make the whole thing work. So with that said, thank you all for listening and tuning in. Please share this video everywhere. I love you all. A child's voice on Vimeo, no restrictions entertainment, save the children, end human trafficking, and love will win.